if you know somebody trying to get louder or if you know somebody that's new to car audio and just need some tips on setting it up or whatever, this is the video, guys. Give a one like to live out here in this world, man. If you don't do it right now, then when you gonna do it? If you don't do it for nobody else, make sure you do it for yourself. If you ain't got nobody, do it, but then do it for yourself. Do it, do it for yourself. Do it, do it for yourself. And when they start hating on you, tell them thank you for the hell. Thank you, thank you for the hell. Thank you, thank you for the hell. If you ain't got nobody, do it, but then do it for yourself. Do it, do it for yourself. Do it, do it for yourself. And when they start hating on you, tell them thank you for the hell. Thank you, thank you for the hell. Thank you, thank you for the hell. What's going on guys welcome back to the channel man in today's video i'm gonna be dropping some car audio jewels for you guys that want to be a little bit louder or if you if this is your first system and you're trying to figure out how in the hell can i get it a tad bit louder there are a lot of small things that you can do that will definitely help your your system man so if you know somebody that's trying to be trying to get louder or if you know somebody that's new to car audio and just need some tips on setting it up or whatever this is the video guys so make sure y'all like comment share subscribe click some no click the notification bell man <laughs> so to help the channel grow the join to grow the fact i can't even get right y'all i'm gonna show y'all what i what i keep looking at i'm gonna show y'all my situation right now because apparently i'm still at work so this is my current situation I had four stops this morning up here in Atlanta. I completed my four stops at the Walmart. Now I got what they call a backhaul. I'm about to drop off the empty trailer I have and pick up. My trailer is over there somewhere. I just walked over there and checked it. But I'm about to pick up my loaded trailer and drop the empty off. Now my thing is, can y'all see how tight the yard is? There's a truck leaving that you got the yellow Peterbilt and you got like three more on the other side, guys. When I say it's tight, guys it's tight so i got to figure out there's a spot right there beside the walmart trailer where i can put my empty right and if this guy get out my way in front of me i would be able to uh bag up and start turning my trailer in the spot pull up bag up pull up bag up till i get my tractor around and i can go straight in the spot dodging this um peterbilt but it's going to be tight either way it goes. So that's what I keep looking at. I'm watching the flow of these trucks. Number one thing, well, number one, the first thing you need, if you're trying to get louder or if you just get into a car audio and you scribing, scribing to be loud, the first thing you need is some good OFC, not CCA, OFC, zero gauge, power and ground wire. That's number one. CCA wire works, but it can be restricted. We all know copper is way more conductive than aluminum. That's a given. Now you may say, well, that shit hot. It is, but in this hobby, this is really one of those hobbies where you have to pay to play, literally. Number two, you want to do the big three. You want to do your big three kit, man. Uh, some guys do the big four, but you want to install the big three kit. And that will help your voltage hold a little bit more silent. It's not going to be a real drastic change, but it's just enough to help. Like I told y'all, it's small things like that that helps in the long run. The next thing and probably the most important thing in your whole entire build is an upgraded alternator. You want to get you a high performance upgrade alternator, man. Uh, what is a 220, 240, 320, 350, 370, however they come. You want to get you a high output upgraded alternator. And just with the alternator, just with the OFC zero gauge wire, the big three, and a high output alternator, you will hear. A day and night difference in how solid your subwoofer sound. Cause there's a huge difference. Once you get your alternator, you wanna you wanna if possible, you wanna replace your uh, battery battery. You wanna take that uh, acid battery out of there and you wanna replace it with a good AGM. A lot of people go with uh, XS power D3400 for the uh, battery 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 replacement. 
And a lot of guys just go with a huge lithium in the back and they delete the front battery. So you can go either way. Next, you want to make sure you get you a pretty good head unit, man. Um, if you get a head unit that'll put out anywhere from three to four volts pre-out or higher, you're doing pretty good. If it's lower than that, it'll work. But like I said, your quality uh, is going to be iffy. Okay, so try to find you a head unit with at least three to four volt pre-out or higher. And you might be like, yeah, the motherfucker be high. But once again, like I said, in this hobby, if you're trying to achieve your goal of being as loud as possible, you have to pay to play, and that's for sure. You got your head unit, you got your big three, you got your alternator, you replace your under the hood battery, or uh, you got your OFC zero gauge wire. Next, you want to get you some high quality um, RCA, man. Now you can go online and get the $17 RCA, the $10 RCA. They gonna work perfectly fine. Don't get me wrong. They are gonna work perfectly fine. But you wanna find you some pretty good quality RCAs, man. And that's gonna drastically help the sound quality of your entire setup if you get you some good RCAs, man. The downside of the cheap ones, like I said, they get the job done. But eventually, you're going to start getting feedback and static out on because they ain't going to last that long. Let's just be honest. They, you get what you pay for. They ain't going to last that long. So if you're able, get you some high quality, some good quality RCA wire to run to your amplifiers from your head unit to the back. Once you get your RCAs, a lot of people may not agree and a lot of people probably will. And I'm a firm believer now. You want to get you a... Uh, you want to get you some some sort of crossover, man. Get you some sort of crossover. That way, you can manipulate each frequency from your doors, your tweets, your horns, your subs. You can you can fine tune each frequency and really dial your system in with a um, crossover of some sort. Now, when it comes to your subwoofer amplifiers or your door speaker amplifiers or whatever that whatever the case may be, that's solely on you. That's solely on you. That's your preference. For the most part, you don't need a real expensive amplifier on your doors at all. You don't. You just need to make sure that it has enough power to push what you're trying to run. Uh, and that and that still falls back on your preference. Cause like I say, some guys are still won't you know what I'm saying, that high quality L, but it's not required. Unless you're the type of guy that likes to open your doors and, and have a, and host a whole concert. Now, if you're that type of guy, you won't go with the with the best because you're going to be competing with other guys nine times out of 10 that are doing the same. But me personally, I don't care too much about all that. Yes, I want my doors loud and clear, but I ain't going to be the guy opening my doors up trying to, trying to have a whole damn concert out there. I want to get you with the bass. That's me. I want to get you with the bass. But they, my doors and shit gonna sound good, but I ain't definitely probably gonna be the loudest out there when it comes to the doors. So, so with a, so with an amplifier, strictly your preference. Just make sure that it has enough RMS power to power the subs that you're trying to run. Do not go off of the max power on any amplifier. I don't care what amp it is or what brand it is who it from don't go off of that unless you're into burping if you the type of person that compete and you get on get on the meter and you just burp your system for a, a, a couple seconds one or two seconds a quick burst of energy that's when you go by that max power and all that good stuff because in that short burst of energy that short burst of power that's when you're seeing all that rms power is what you're going to constantly get while you going from home to work, from home to the grocery store, from the grocery store, whatever. RMS power is what your soul will for nine times is going nine times out of ten is gonna see the entire time the amplifier is on. I almost forgot. You wanna get you some good strong chassis ground. Now I know a lot of guys like to bolt they still to the uh mount their ground wires and still to the seatbelt bolt. Don't get me wrong, it works. If it works, it works. But if you can, 
if you have to, drill a hole into, into your floor, go up under your car, your truck, SUV, whatever the case may be, make sure you have an opening where you ain't gonna drill into nothing that, that's gonna hurt your car. And if you have an open spot, drill you some holes, get you some grommets, and run your ground straight to your chassis. Run your ground straight to the frame of the car. Get you a, a wire wheel, clean the frame off, straight to the chassis with it. That's gonna be your absolute best spot for grounding. No, I don't know what the hell he's talking about. Uh, now, another very important thing, if you're trying to be loud as possible. Now, this all depends on your budget and what your goal is for your system, but we speaking on being the loudest, loud as possible or trying to get as loud as possible. Okay. A lot of guys go on the internet, Amazon, eBay, Google shit. They go online and they go and buy these $150 prefab boxes that tuned to 45, 50 hertz stuff like that right there and wonder why your subwoofers don't play low your subwoofer play low note like trash it's because the tuning of that box the box is tuned too high it's not gonna play low notes great at all tuned that high your box is almost as important as the alternator the uh the alternator the batteries your box is almost as important as your alternator and your batteries but your subwoofer box plays a mega role in how your system gonna sound. Now, I know I've seen a couple of comments in my old videos of guys like, well, I don't have nobody in my area that build boxes and all that good stuff. Okay, that's fine. But you have plenty of guys on the internet, like uh, for, say for instance, MB Enclosure. He will build that box for you and ship it to you. Uh, my homeboy up there in Montgomery, Alabama, uh, Jason McDaniel, up there at the box shop in Montgomery, Alabama, he'll be your silent box. So there's plenty of avenues. I mean, yes, it can't get expensive with the shipping and all that, but like once again, in this hobby, you have to pay to play. And it's just that simple. And it took me a while to realize that too, because hey, we all live and learn. But your subwoofer box, is important now say you like me and you love the low notes you love the low notes but you don't want to miss out on all your mid-range bass and and, and and slightly some of the higher range bass i like bass that drop real low but on certain notes you it had you grabbing your throat or it digging your ear real good so i figured that i found out over the years my magic normal for box tuning is 32 hertz. Your box tuning at 32 hertz, it will play the mid 20 hertz with authority. That's how you get the flow shit and all that. It will play the mid, the mid 20s, probably down to the lower 20s with some authority. And you can still get up into the mids and high 30s and it sounds damn good. And you get a good bandwidth, in my opinion, with your box tuned to 32 hertz. 33 hertz, you get the same difference. Even at 35 hertz, is with, which is what my uh, wife, the box in my wife car, that's what it's tuned to, 35 hertz. That car still plays low note, but it don't get as low as, just say, as Ghost did, because Ghost, the box that was in Ghost was tuned three octaves lower than the box that's in her car, but her car still plays low note, but you know, mid 30s, all the way up to probably like the mid 40 hertz. Shit, man, that's another will run you out of there. But that's just my opinion. But like I said, your box play a huge role, guys. So if you're trying to be loud, and that's your goal to be loud, and you like low notes, uh, don't go buying them $80 boxes off Amazon and all that, bro. Save your money, man. Save your money. And there are companies that's on eBay and Amazon and stuff that design and build silent boxes. But make sure you go to the description and see what it's tuned to. Especially if you're looking for the low notes. Make sure you go and check and see what that box is tuned to, bro. 
Yo, if you don't, and you looking for the low notes, you like decal music, you're going to be disappointed. Very disappointed. All right, guys. So I done made it home, thank God. But that's just my little checklist. And this, this video really for the guys that ask, you know, they ask questions on like, what should I do or what I need for this and how I do this and did that in the third. I'm going to give you all some advice and trust me, I know because I done went through a lot of equipment trying to take shortcuts and shit, man. Do it right the first time. That way you ain't got to do it over again, man. So if you can, if you can hold off a little bit, save your money and go on, get something of quality. Of course, um, you'll be thankful for it in the future. And uh, it was probably some things I missed, probably some things I left out. Y'all seen I did this video while I was at work or whatever. And it just popped in my mind and I figured I'd share that with y'all. Because I do get a lot of guys asking a lot of questions about some of those topics that I brought up. And I figured I'd share that. So if you haven't, make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. Click the notification bell in the uh and make sure when you hit that notification bell, press the all button. That way you'll know every time I upload. Um, like I said, it's just me sharing a little knowledge from what I learned over the years. And I have had some pretty loud setups, man. I think the loudest car I had was like a 148 something. And that was out the trunk. So yeah, I, I, I was down there doing 150s out the trunk with the back seat in. So yeah, and that's hard as hell to do. A lot of people say that's hard to do for real. So just sharing my experience, sharing the knowledge, man. If y'all like this video, share it to somebody that probably asked y'all that question before. And maybe I answer some questions for them for you. Uh this your boy Bass at it, checking out with another one. I'm about to go get me some rest. I gotta hit it again. Let's get it. We are ah. Sweet dreams that could start off as nightmares, yeah. Boys, your opinion, but who really cares? Yeah. Niggas saying that I'm motherfucking been here before. Like I got a whole, like I got a whole soul, you know. We cool. Not that same dude back in high school. Trials and tribulation had to make.